All right, I have a leaky injector line. It goes from the fuel rail uh, down to the injector. Uh, injector number four. Let's see if I can get you down in there. Which is this guy back here. I don't know if you can see all this crap in the way, but it is a little damp coming out of that nut there. <clears throat> So what I suspect is that this line cracked at some point uh, a few days ago and it's just barely weeping out fuel. Now I've tried to remove it, crank it down again and uh, did that a few times and that did not work. Uh, now I put these lines on when I did the injectors probably about almost three years ago now and they've been holding up fine since then. And one thing I did that you'll want to do if you're going to change a line out is go ahead and put some sealant down in there, down right in here, because that's going to keep all of the, uh, the dirt, debris, and, and stuff from falling down in there, which when you remove this line, it'll get between the cracks and then fall directly into your injector. Then you got to clean that out. And then uh, cross your fingers when you send it, and hopefully it doesn't clog up your injector. <clears throat> if uh, if you have the OG injectors or really old injectors, you don't have any sealant, and uh, or sorry, the old injector lines on there, they're rusty. You got a bunch of crap in there. You can almost guarantee that when you remove this line, it's going to dump down into your uh, injector there. Um, not sure what to tell you. Use your best judgment. Maybe, maybe if the leak isn't too bad. Nope. Screw that. Best thing to do. Best best thing to do is to go ahead and remove everything. Remove the the valve cover and uh, replace the injectors uh, as well. That is the probably the best and most expensive thing to do. But. You can also just YOLO it and just try to replace the one injector line, try to clean out the injector as best as you can using shop vac. Uh, I don't recommend using compressed air just because that might blow the dirt further down in the injector and cause some issues. It really is a crapshoot, but I've already moved that line a couple of times and I looked down in the injector, nothing was in there because I had sealed it up a few years ago. Everything is still pretty fresh, it's just the line failed. picked up this fuel line uh, from Amazon it's a dormant part it's uh, the one part that I could find with free shipping that uh, only sent a single line up to Alaska everywhere else that I went like XDP and other places they all use UPS you can buy the $60 line and if you fly it up to where I am it's another 70 80 bucks 100 bucks shipping and handling through UPS so uh, and UPS is is not that good up here I got a uh, a radiator fan that's been held up for over a week um, just sitting there because they they lost it in their own shop and UPS is super expensive so uh, if you are a parts dealer and you sell it to Alaska just send it through USPS it is faster it's cheaper it's more efficient and, uh, and if you can get a store in Amazon and do free shipping that's even better for us because uh, Otherwise, we can't buy parts from you if shipping costs more than the actual part. Like, you shouldn't be paying $70 shipping for this. Such such a tiny item. You can put that in a flat rate box for like five, seven bucks, something like that. I digress. Oh, and if UPS is watching this, get your shit together, guys. All right. So what do we got to do to fix this? We need a 19 um, millimeter wrench. Uh, preferably a flare nut or a crow's foot. I have no idea where mine is, so I'm not going to be able to torque this down to 33, 35 foot pounds. I'm going to have to use a wrench and use my my best judgment on what 35 pounds feels like. Uh, to get down to injector number four, I'm going to go ahead and remove these clips. I'm going to try to show you one hand. She's pull back, pops, and then you can separate. I'm gonna need both hands, so I'm gonna do that off camera, get that out of the way, get you set up, and then we're gonna start removing that line. Okay, you got those harnesses peeled back. You are gonna have to remove this uh, little injector nut holder thing. I removed mine last week when I was investigating the issue initially. All it is is just a screw 
and that pops right off. Uh, so no real big secret here. I'm going to slowly loosen up the injector line. <clears throat> it's a uh, you don't have to worry about you know 23,000 psi blasting out of you and slicing off your fingers. It's just going to dribble a little bit. The pump's not on, and when the pump is on, it just pulsates to the injectors. Uh, so you'll be fine just to remove remove the line. Uh, I'm going to start back here, loosen that up, and then I'll loosen that up. Same injector, old one, new one, uh, we'll see. I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing in reverse. I'm going to install the line, I'm going to very loosely tighten the back so that the front is still a little uh, loose so that it firmly fits down into the injector. And then I'll tighten down the front first and then cinch down the back. Now one thing you got to remember with these injectors, they are compressed in there. And so once they're compressed, I don't know if you can tell, but it is form fitting and very unique to your line and your injector. And once you remove it and put it back in, you know, you might be able to get it a nice fit again. You probably will, but sometimes you might not get it exactly the same way and these things are under high pressure. so they may leak so this is kind of a Hail Mary get her done right the first time type of thing so let's see what we can do get you down in there you can see what the injector looks like that's what we're threading to there's no debris in there as you can see it looks clean okay so we'll go ahead put that down in there um, spin it on the back, a couple of threads. Just need both hands here. Nice. Spin it on by hand, pretty easy. That's what you want. That feels pretty good. Injector line, it seems pretty all right. That's where you want to torque it to like 33, 35 foot pounds. I'm just gonna cinch it on there. Get a little front. Cinch it down in the back a little bit. Cinch it back in the front. This is gonna kind of hold the injector line so I don't give it the onions too much. Cinch the back. 35 foot pounds isn't too much, so we don't want to go crazy. And you can kind of feel the seat anyways. Startup will take a few cranks. We gotta get the fluid, all well, the fuel through the line again. And then I'll check for leaks as well. Make sure we got it. Start up. Oh. Okay, harnesses are plugged back in. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and let my truck warm up. It's 
still cold and uh, monitor it for leaks after it's warm and then I'll take it around the block. Uh, so what I noticed when the injector line was leaking before, it did not leak at idle. Only when I put pressure into it, because uh, what I, what do you guys idle at? Is it six, seven thousand psi, or so? Maybe more. I don't. I can't remember. Uh, but we can go well into the high 20, 20 thousands psi, 23, 26, 27 thousand psi. Then once you start getting on that pedal, the pressure is going to build up, and then that's when it's going to leak. Um, so one thing, I uh, unintentionally did something. That I don't think you have to do, but I unintentionally did something kind of right, maybe. I forgot to plug in my harnesses again before I kicked it over, so when I started it, it fueled my lines, and then when I plugged the, uh, plugged the harnesses back in, everything was primed and kicked right over. So, I'm gonna let it warm up, see what happens. Okay, I just took it out for a drive, got some pressure. And we are not leaking, thankfully. Okay, so I'm going to count my blessings that all I have to do is change this line and hopefully the new line holds up well. Uh, they do get, I guess, hairline fractures every once in a while. This was a nice brand new stainless steel one. So, I don't know, my, uh, my thoughts on buying the nice stainless ones are not, it's not necessary. Sons of bitches might blow on you anyway, so get what you want and hope that it doesn't blow up on you. So last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go back in there and I'm going to seal the holes with some gasket sealer. Whatever I got, I got to see what I got. And that'll prevent any dirt, rust, or any debris or crap falling down into my injector when I remove the line. It's not going to fall into your injector while the line's still on there. It's just going to accumulate and then once... You remove that injector line, and this is free again, then it's just gonna poop out all that crud directly into your injector and in your valve cover probably, or under your valve cover uh, on, on top of your heads. But uh, anyways, I'm gonna go do that right now and I'm gonna call this one a win. Again, I bought that part on Amazon, free shipping. Uh, you can buy them in singles or you can buy a set. This is a Dorman part. I know a lot of people like to shit on Dorman, but I don't know, I've been using them for 20 something years and I've had less Dorman parts fail than uh, your standard aftermarkets or OEMs or any of the expensive brand names. So get what you want. I'm just telling you that's what I did and I'm going to leave a link for you because it was a pretty decent price and if you have Amazon shipping you might as well save yourself some money. Especially if you live in Alaska because the shipping for a little part like this is going to cost more than the actual part. Again. UPS, get your shit together. All right, guys. I guess that's it. Hope it helped you. Glad it was simple and it was easy. And uh, consider subscribing. If you are an LB7 fan or a Duramax fan in general, I got a ton of videos on this Duramax 2001 LB7 Duramax GMC Sierra.